welcome back to AR77. Today's video is not a guide. Um, I could argue that it contains zero practical advice. Uh, you might find something in there. You might find a little nugget if you mind deep enough. But we're not really talking about practicalities today, or practicalities, put my teeth in. Today we're going to talk about a different aspect of replica airgun ownership, uh, specifically replica airgun ownership, as obviously the channel is AR-77, airgun replicas 77, not airguns 77. And what we're going to talk about today is the fact that we love how these things look. Never mind <laughs> how many magazines full of ammunition you're going to get per CO2 capsule, never mind how accurate they are, never mind how strong the blowback is or whether or not the pistol has blowback. Today we're looking at aesthetics and I've chosen some of my pistols which I particularly like the look of. I might like to shoot them as well. I mean, I enjoy shooting all my pistols, let's be honest. And when it comes to looks as well, I do like guns, let's be honest. So it's hard for me to not just bring all of them out pretty much for every video. Uh, you know, I could do that, but it gets a bit silly. And I like to keep some back. I don't shoot all of them all of the time. That's, that's a fact of the matter as well. Some of them are more just to keep... Uh, looking nice and I bring them out now and then. So I've got a selection of the ones that I think look particularly nice and it was it was tricky narrowing it down because there's a couple where I thought actually I could have I could have shown you this one or that one. A notable mention let's say is the um the Sig Sauer 1911 Spartan. I really love the look of that gun partly because it's kind of unique you know, it's got that kind of bronze look to it. It's got all the Spartan branding and things like that. It's a really nice pistol. And as you know, I love 1911s anyway. So it was difficult not to bring that one out. But I have another one, another 1911 style pistol here that I like the look of. Um, arguably a little bit more. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's look at some nice looking guns, shall we? And uh, spend a bit of time getting up close and personal. So, where shall we start? Well, let's look at the Springfield Armoury XDM. You've seen this pistol quite a bit, I think, on the channel. And when this came out, I was really keen to get hold of one, just because it looked so different to the other pistols that I'd got. Obviously, it's, it's a complete, you know, quite accurate rep replica of the Springfield XDM, this is the, the longer version, the full size, the 4.5. I do have the compact as well, the 3.8, which uh, is a little bit extravagant, I suppose, but sometimes, you know, when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> um, it's a lovely looking pistol. It really is, um, with this kind of metal uh, slide here, that again, that term satin kind of metal slide particular kind of things that I like about this are you know this Springfield arm with this etching in the top here in the slide they've got that Springfield Armoury logo I love that I love the XDM kind of branding there XDM 4.5 um, you, your warning is subtly kind of etched into the slide there it's a big bone of contention for a lot of people that how they present that warning information they do a good thing on the glock um series where they often have the warning under there um but then some of them you've got to put up with a bit of white writing so yeah lovely bit of branding there i love these kind of aggressive slide serrations front and rear kind of chevrons really really love that it just it looks i don't know it looks like quite an aggressive pistol and i and i I like that. I like these fiber optic sights at the front here. That kind of front sight post. And nice clear white dots at the back for good sight acquisition there. Um, look at the grip. Let's look at that. Look how it's like a like a tractor tire. This grip is so in your face, so aggressive, so practical, really. You know, if you want to get a good grip on that thing, yeah, fantastic. And it comes with, you know, three different sizes of backstrap there, so you can really find the one that, that suits your sort of, your, your hold and your style. 
it's a really lovely looking pistol. Um, I've got this this bit that pops out at the back there, just an extra detail. I like details. I think because I'm not in a position where I where I can uh, or want to necessarily own the real world um, kind of firearm of this type. I like it when there's as much detail as possible to the replica. For me, you know, I'd happily spend a day on a range shooting real pistols. I don't know if I want to own one. Um, I don't know about that. I'm quite happy just plinking and shooting with these pistols, but I do enjoy ownership of these guns. Um, and for me, if I can get a replica that does everything that the real thing does, other than carry the, you know, the, the paperwork and the, I mean, obviously in, in the UK, there's all sorts of legislation around owning pistols. And I don't, I wouldn't want one that had got the extensions and things on it just for the sake of owning it. Um, that's not really my bag. I'm more about that authentic kind of pistol look. So I'm quite happy with these, with these replicas, especially ones like this. Look at that Springfield Armory, USA. Um, be really good. You know, often happens with uh, some of my viewers in the US, you often get in touch and sort of, you tell me how how realistic these things are compared to the real world firearms, the real steel, if you will. A lot of you use these as, as training tools or, yeah, just practice tools, just a bit of fun because the, the ammo is so cheap, of course. Uh, and I guess from your point of view, the closer they are to the real thing, the more useful they are as a training tool. So yeah, let me know what you think about some of these. Let me know if you think they are close or if there's any specific details that are vastly different. Once again, with the XDM, you've got a lovely, again, that metal sort of um, magazine there. And you've got your kind of rounds numbered there. It doesn't correlate to, to the, the replica because obviously all your BB rounds just sort of stack up there, um, almost kind of single stack really. Um, but it's good, it adds to the authenticity of it. Really, really lovely pistol. The Springfield Armoury XDM. What's not to love? Okay, what's next? Let's have a look. Okay, yeah, this is a pistol that I don't show very often. I don't shoot it very often. But I do find it to be a beautiful, a beautiful replica. Um, this is the ASG. Uh, CZ seventy five SPO one Shadow. Now this is the the, the sort of the Mark One uh, Shadow. I know they've got another one out, and it's got these the kind of the blue grips there, and it's that looks like a lovely pistol. I'm not sure about those blue grips though. Um, it might be it might be a lot better than this. I'm I'm thinking it's probably pretty much the same internals and everything, um, but I don't know. I don't know about those blue grips. I'm not sure about that. Um, and I kind of like, what I like about this one is it's almost a transition between old and new. You know, the pistol itself is it almost a transition between old and new. You've got these old kind of, this old sort of CZ sweeping sort of shape here, this cutaway. The, the grip is kind of an old style, as is the sort of trigger guard and trigger. Before everything got kind of squared off, you know. And I quite like that. It, it's kind of a mix of, of, of old and new, obviously the new being things like the uh, the rail at the front and everything. Let's address the elephant in the room. I'm an Englishman, born and bred. I'm proud to be. Um, so why am I saying CZ instead of CZ? I know, it's a tricky one, isn't it? But it just rolls off the tongue, CZ. It just works as a, as a kind of a brand name. Um, so I should say CZ. Um, my fellow Englishmen, but oh, what can I say? I don't care. CZ, for me. Um, so a lovely pistol. I think one of the things that I like particularly about this in terms of how it looks is just that, that really clean black. It's, it's, I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's one of the blackest guns I own. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I think it's the finish the quality of the paint, I don't know if the paint's particularly good quality or particularly bad quality, but obviously, as it doesn't see a lot of use, um, that doesn't make a big a big amount of difference. It just, it looks like almost like if Batman had a gun, 
he might consider something like this. Uh, it's really, really lovely to look at. Yeah, we've got a bit of white writing there with ASG, but it's not, it's not too much. I don't think it's only the, the basics. Obviously, these these red points just you know that you've got this this sort of the safety indicator there, and this lovely, again you know this uh, fiber optic uh, front sight. Just it's an added little detail. The black and the red always looks looks good together. He says with a black glove and a and a red top on, and then just to set it all off, you've got this lovely cutaway kind of. Uh, slide with the uh, I guess stainless kind of outer barrel there obviously it's kind of brass is it brass what would you call that um and the internal there but you've got that sort of stainless almost brushed feel to the outer barrel um which continues so that when you see the cutaway you see that there too and then on top of that just one one little cool thing. You've got this lovely trigger here, which is finished in a lovely kind of chrome effect. Um, and I think that just sets it off really nicely. A really lovely, attractive looking pistol there. Classic looking, a good handful to hold, good weight. Again, full metal replica, blows back. You can take it down and everything. Um, magazine wise, I've got a couple of magazines for this. Um, the, these big kind of black magazines um, again closed in so that's that's nice well standard standard fare really so yeah looks like a really nice pistol if you ask me the CZ 75 SP01 shadow really lovely looking pistol there let me know what you think okay let's move on uh, a bit further we can't have a conversation like this without me bringing a 1911 to the table. So, FYI, I own a number of 1911s. I own the Remington RAC by KWC. I own the Remington RAC TAC in kind of black by, by KWC. Um, I do own the Spartan, which I've mentioned. I also own the SIG, uh, We The People. Uh, by KWC and SIG, I guess. That's a beautiful looking pistol, um, and no doubt. But, I don't know, I think, I think there's something about this one, which I particularly love. This is the 1911 <laughs> by KWC. This is the Swiss Arms version. You can get a, a, an identical um, version branded by uh, Remington, I believe, which is is essentially the Remington RAC tactical re rebranded, basically and re re labeled up. This is the Swiss Arms. This the tactical rail system, as you can see, it says tactical rail system there. And just in case you were going to forget TRS in the back there. And this is possibly, even though I love the We the People one by Sig, and it's a, it's an equally good gun in terms of operation. Obviously, it's the same. Basic pistol, it's KWC 1911. There's something about this that really, really does it for me. Um, it's got these fake kind of wood grips, and if I'm honest, for me, they don't really detract that much at all. I think they're a fair, a fair crack of the whip at a kind of a faux wood grip. Um, I love this kind of chromed barrel here. Uh, let me just get my hands around this pistol. Um, love that. Love that kind of cut out and chromed barrel. Um, again, sight wise, you've got really nice looking sights, front and back. I think the reason that I love this so much is again, it's got it's got such a, a recognizable look to it. It's so clearly uh, a nineteen eleven. But it's also so clearly based on one of my favourite 1911s, which is the Kimber Warrior. In fact, what I sometimes do is I take the slide off this and I replace it with the black slide 
from the Remington RAC tactical, leaving the kind of chrome barrel in there, and you've got something that looks an awful lot like a Kimber Warrior. Things that kind of stand out and make me think it's completely based on that, the way that this, the, the lower the frame here, juts out a bit at the front. Um, I'll try and, I'll put a picture up if I haven't already. You can see that that's a particular kind of style accent that is featured on the Kimber. Um, also these slide serrations, front and rear, these nice broad serrations. You know, the style of, of, of sight there. I think they're Novak, I think they call them Novak sights. Um, everything about this looks just like the Kimber. The skeletonized trigger here, the kind of the skeletonized, if that's the word that you use in that context, the uh, the hammer there, this lovely sweeping tail here, you know, the beaver tail on the, um, uh, on the grip safety. Yeah, and I really love that. I love the fact that it's a replica of a particularly nice looking real world firearm. Again, nicely uh, recessed barrel there. This kind of brushed stainless effect down the slide really works well. And that the fact that the writing there is just etched in, kind of laser etched into the slide, I think is a really nice, really nice touch. Uh, really lovely looking pistol. I really trying to get these shots for you so that you can look close and personal with them. Um, yeah. I think, although I love the We The People, I don't know, I think this perhaps has to be my, my, my best looking 1911, in my opinion. And obviously it's not, it's not quite standard. I, one minor thing I did was change these, these kind of uh, grip screws just to some silver ones. Um, doesn't make a massive difference, but personalizes it a little touch. Um, and they're quite, quite nice. They're not kind of sunk in either, they step out, so. Yeah, there you go. The uh, the 1911 Tactical Rail System by Swiss Arms. Lovely pistol. There is, of course, the um, the other one they brought out at the same time, which is kind of more like the um, more like the, the the Remington RAC. It's it's the is it the A kind of based on the A A one? Is it? Do they call it with the kind of backstrap extension there, more more of an older shape. Um, and that's nice as well, obviously it doesn't, it, it's a bit more subtle, it doesn't have the, the, uh, oh my goodness, what do they call that? Rail, thank you, uh, for those of you shouting out in your living rooms. It doesn't have the rail on it, it's a far more subtle pistol. Again, it's far more like the, it's, it's exactly the same as the Remington ROC. Um, and that's nice as well. I, I, quite like to get a hold of one of those, but I think they're a bit like hen's teeth. I think they're pretty difficult to get hold of, obviously. A lot of people bought them when they first came out, but that's finished in exactly the same way. You've got this kind of, um, almost kind of parkerized kind of gray around the, the lower uh, and the frame around there. And then you have this brushed, brushed steel right along the, uh, the slab sides, the other sides of the, uh, the slide there. Lovely looking pistol. Yeah. Oh, time's up. Not quite. Okay, what's next? Well, I can't have a video about good looking pistols without bringing in <laughs> the Baba Yeager himself. Look at that for an attractive pistol. So, the replica version of the Terran Tactical Combat Master, which is again a customized version of the uh, STI kind of. Uh, oh, there goes my camera again. Uh, 2011 rather than 1911, I think it's a double stack magazine in reality. And obviously, this is famous and popular and collectible because. We've seen it in the John Wick films. What a gorgeous looking pistol. Look at that. Look at that. The colours on that is it's just beautiful. And this is really shooting quite nicely. Now it's really 
smooth for me. Um, I don't shoot it an awful lot. I had I had a bit of a love hate relationship with the with the magazine, but I seem to have figured that out now. Um, I don't leave CO two in it for too long because I think it's quite a tight fit in there, and you can get the CO two stuck. But I've not had that issue for I'd say the last the last three times I shot it. So over the past probably two or three months, uh, this doesn't often come out because I just like to keep it. Looking nice, um, but I do, I do enjoy shooting it again now. Uh, that's lovely. Again, again, that black, and that almost. Well, is it what what colours is that? Would you say it's like a copper, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful looking pistol, and again that fiber optic sight at the front. Obviously based on a type of nineteen eleven, you know the twenty eleven. Um, but it's got these, these kind of squared off ends to the... Well, it runs all the way down, doesn't it? All down the slide. Again, fibre optics uh, at the back there. So a really clear sight picture. Such a lovely looking pistol. I love this. Again, this skeletonized trigger. Let's get in there. And it's a bit grippy at the front. All the screws and nuts and bolts and things look great in this pistol. Um, this is made by a company called Crownland. But yeah, adjustable sights at the front. Uh, well, certainly looks adjustable. I've not tried to. I think it is. Skeletonized. Again, if that's the word. Hammer. There. Everything works on this pistol. And look at that. Look at that cutout. I love that. <laughs> I do love that. Bit of white writing there, but I think we can forgive that, can't we, people? Yeah, these kind of fish scale almost grips that wrap right around this pistol. And obviously the flared kind of mag well there at the bottom for, you know, ease of dropping your mag. It's a very heavy mag, I will tell you that. And then slapping the next one in. And Johnny's ready to dispatch some bad guys once again. Really lovely looking pistol. Similar again to the uh, the, the 1911 I just shown you. It's got these really strong slide serrations, front and rear. Yeah, and that guide rod that you can see sort of protruding as well. It all adds to the realism of the pistol itself. Really lovely looking gun. Uh, little details as well, like just that, that cut out there, the things that have been customised on this pistol uh, and then faithfully reproduced for the replica air pistol. Definitely want to get your hands on. If you if you get hold of one of these and you don't like it, I'd be very, very surprised. I can imagine people prioritising other guns or the pistols that they want in their collection. I can understand that. That's fair enough to each their own. But I defy anyone to get hold of this and not feel like this is a awesome piece of kit. Yeah, really nice. It's not perfect operationally. It's not. It's not perfect. I, I did have a bit of issue with the with the mag, um, but beyond that, it seems to be working okay. And now I kind of understand the pistol, and I, I kind of forgive its uh, its its uh, shortcomings. Then, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that I've got this in my collection. Okay. Well, that's almost it for today. We've already sort of droned on for quite a while. I do want to bring in another pistol, though. And this is what I would call a Marmite gun. Because you either love this or hate it. Specifically, this size of this particular gun. And this is the controversial 4-inch ASG 715 revolver. Now you can get the, you know, the snub nose one, the, the sort of, I think it's two inch or 2.5 inch, I'm not sure which. Uh, and you can obviously get the delicious and gorgeous six inch uh, in a similar finish, or you can get it in the sort of the grade finish. Um, I've opted for the four inch because I have the Colt Python in six, I have the Dan Weston in six, um, I've got the Colt Single Action Army. Again, they're all really lovely looking guns, but there's something about this that I particularly like. 
I don't know if it's just the, the, the heft of it, the, the weight. I do love those grips. I do love to hold that. I've said it before, I think. It's like someone just got a bit of plasticine or clay and just squeezed it. And that is how they came up with the shape of that grip. It is, it is perfect for my hand. Um, the bone of contention, I think, with this, I think you, you know, you'd be hard pu pushed to argue that that's not an attractive pistol. A lot of people really don't like this rail on the front. And while I would never use it, I do actually quite like it. I quite like the fact that it makes the front of the pistol look a little bit more aggressive. I mean, it is an aggressive looking gun anyway, with all these sort of right angles and, and 45 degrees. You know, a lot of straight lines on this pistol. If you look down, the uh, the barrel there, it's, it's, all, it's all quite angular. Yeah. Lovely looking gun. Lovely looking gun. But yeah, I, I quite like that that at the front of it. I know that some people don't and won't. I don't I don't mind it at all. I think it looks lovely. It looks lovely. Really good. Uh, yeah. Great pistol. Great pistol. Um, what else do I like about it? Well, obviously the finish of it is, is fantastic. Aesthetically, yeah, it, it, it... I mean, this isn't aesthetics, I guess. But the, the way that... It sounds the way that it's built it is as solid as anything. Love the smooth trigger here. That sort of it, you, you, your finger really sort of wraps around that, and it's it's so smooth when you cock it and fire it. Yeah, you have got a bit of brand in there. You've got that ASG and stuff, but again, it's subtly done at the front there. ASG, and you're made in Taiwan, and you. Caliber information and stuff. You've got your Dan Wesson branding right there in the grips and these kind of Hogue style grips. Again, I'm trying to get up and close for you. Even the safety, you know, the subtle safety looks like it should be there in in a way. It's, it's quite good that quite neat how they've how they fit that in. It it's so accurate to the real steel again. What's not to like? What's not to like about that? Such a lovely pistol. I think my favourite bit aesthetically on this pistol has got to be this bit of writing here. 357 Magnum. Again, kind of cut into the the under the, the under lug, if you will, of that uh, of that barrel. Really lovely looking pistol. Now obviously there are other pistols that are, are not on this list and are noticeable due to their absence that are beautiful looking pistols. Um, if they're not here, it's because either A, I don't own them, or B, they've not just made the cut on this occasion. These are the ones that, that stand out to me for kind of a specific set of reasons. Um, let me know what you think. Share your thoughts in the comments. Let me know whether you agree with any of these choices, if you disagree with any of these choices. Let me know if there's any pistols from my collection that you think should have been featured here today. Also, if you're a, a fan of the channel, uh, let me know if there's other pistols within my collection that you'd like to see more of. Um, so if there's anything else that you want to see again, or a particular aspect, or a particular view, or anything like that, just give me a shout, and I'll see, I'll see what I can do. Great. Well, as always, thanks very much for your time. Uh, take care. All the best. Stay safe. Wait for it. Bye.